Hi, I'm Prof. Cho. I'm a professor for automation and measurement technology at the University of Applied Sciences in Kempten in the very south of Bavaria. And this is part three of chapter two of my lecture on measurement technology there. The lecture itself is AI accompanied, so there's a special prepared GPT linked below you can use to learn all the content, all the facts, all the stuff you need to know about chapter two. And this video only is meant to give you some focus, some additional context information around that and to explain some difficulties, some core as aspects, some core concepts of the different ideas which will be explained to you by the AI. So today we are talking about error propagation. That's a topic people sometimes don't like because it includes calculation. Simple calculation indeed, but first of all, let's explain the problem. So last part we realized we can have some nice things. We can have a measurement A with a certain error delta XA. That's nice. And now, for example, to give you a, 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 a real example, we could have, for example, a voltage plus minus some error and a current plus minus some error for the measurement of a resistance, which indeed gets an error itself because of the ingredients used to calculate the error, which is R is U above I. So our question now is how to know about that stuff. Okay. Writing it directly down. One could just say, look, R is nothing more than u plus minus delta u over i plus minus delta i. So that's great. Having values for u, for i, for the voltage, for the current and for the, the respective errors, we could put in all combinations of errors and values we have and now just choose the maximum values we can uh, achieve. Meaning, for example, use the value u plus delta u over i minus delta i. That will give us the largest r possible. And now the other way around, u minus delta u over i plus delta i will give us the smallest possible value for r. Just using u over i for the center value of r, we could get some rough idea of how large the error in r is. And there's nothing wrong about thinking about that stuff in this way. There's just one or a few, let's say, disadvantages of doing so. First thing, you have to put in all combinations. For that constellation, it's about four combinations. That's, that's doable. That's no problem. Now imagine you have an equation uh, including kind of four or five different values with different errors and you suddenly increase to 32 possibilities you have to check up, that gets even more complex and so on. So the complexity might change drastically with increasing number of ingredients. Moreover, that is nothing which can be used as an equation for example, in an Excel sheet. That, that is not usable. That's just not usable. Moreover, when you would have an equation kind of delta R equals whatsoever, you could get insight into what the error consists of, how it behaves in respect to different incoming values and so on. So doing that combination stuff 
is possible, but but not the ba- not the good thing. It's I, I don't want to say it's it's a bad thing, but it's it's not the good thing. It's not the sufficient thing, especially it's not the thing people do all around in measurement technology. So let me just wipe it away because. That's nothing we want to talk about any further. We'll just keep our starting point over here and make it somewhat more, more um, better defined for different edge cases. So, um, yeah, let's wipe away everything. Uh, our starting point shall be, we have a, a quantity Y. That's, for example, our R or the corresponding to our example, that would be the R, which is given as a function of different measurement values, xA, xB, and so on. Awesome. And now, those things over here all have errors, delta xA, delta xB, delta xC, and so on. Okay, and now our question is, what about the error in Y? So, there's a definition, I'll just write it down. The error in Y is just defined as, but I will give some, yeah, some, some explanation which makes it clear how it in principle works or why we use that definition. So, we define that error as, the derivation of f to one of the measurement ingredients over here times its error plus the derivation the next direction in respect to the next measurement ingredient xb over here times the error in xb and so on. So, I don't know um, how you feel about that such stuff. It's it's easy, ma- it, it's not complex mathematics, but you have to do a derivative over here. But on first glimpse, we see the advantage. We get a real a real equation for our error in y, and moreover, we also get it split up into different parts, into different ingredients. So as we see, the first part only is using values of xA and the error of xA. Nothing more. So we have an ingredient which is very specific to xA, the next ingredient, and so on. That makes it, even at that point, interpretable on what is going on here. Now, how do we get there? The explanation is kind of simple. Imagine there's your measurement value xA and there's the calculated error uh, value y at the y-axis and perhaps they have something yeah, like a polynomial um, correlation to each other. Now we can get at some point where our measurement is and go over here and now imagine the error is given by those small little gaps over here and now we also can have that error painted to the y-axis and so we get an error ingredient on the y-axis. Now the idea is to get those over here but to make it Simpler, we don't use the actual curve, but we use the linearization of that curve at that place. What happens now is, due to the linearization, we may increase the error derived for y. Okay, that's great. Increasing the error is great. Most of the time, we won't increase it because the error should be small or we can expect the error to be small so that that linearization is a is is really a good approximation for the for the for the real curve we have 
So, and now that linearization is nothing more than the derivation of that function y, that function f we have over here. In that point, we have our measurement. And that's the reason for the derivations over here. So, what this is, it's somehow an approximation, but an approximation which gives us larger errors than we could have. So it's a good approximation in respect to the errors. And it gives us a direct view, a direct insight into how that errors are built up. Coming back to our example of you and I, we have that equation y equals r u and i are x a or x b or vice versa. And now we can that error propagation that's the formula for the error propagation. Why is it called propagation? Because the error of the measurement values over here propagate into the calculated value over here. So and let's do that error propagation in R. So assu assuming that we have errors in the voltage and in the current. We just get an error of... Now we use that formula. Plus, minus. Brackets. The derivation of R to the... Let's take U. Times the error in U. Plus... The derivation in the current, I, times the error in I. Yeah, and now that's the thing, that's something you should know even in the world of AI and ChatGPT because you have to have an insight of what is happening here, of how the errors propagate into each other. You have to get a gut feeling for how errors evolve. And for that reason, you, you have to have a gut feeling of what it means to have a derivative. That such a deri derivative can be seen as a linearization of a curve in a certain point and so on. And by that you get a feeling for what happens with these errors. What happens with these errors in the voltage and the current, current when I use them to calculate the resistance. It's not essential to do all the calculations I'm doing right now, but it's essential to, to understand why this all makes sense and why this gives you more insight into your measurement, actually. But now let's just do the calculation for that easy, for that easy example we have over here. So we get plus minus. Um, deriving that just writing it down in simple ways. Deriving that equation by u, simple, it's just 1 over i times the error in u plus, now on the other side, ah, deriving that um, by the current is a little bit more, yeah, complex is the wrong word, but it's, it's not as nice as, as it's to derive to u, so we, we get minus u over i squared times the error in i. Awesome. So we get an error, which is plus minus delta u over y plus u over i squared times delta i. Now, looking at that formula, we can do a check. We see the units. It's volts over ampere. That's a resistance. Here, the current can be, yeah, the current unit can be checked out once, and we also get a resistance as a result. So that all makes sense, even with the derivations, and we get errors in the right units, and we can use them right away. Looking at that, Equation, for example, we get another insight. So, 
looking at the errors, we see that for small currents, the second part would be dominant. So for small currents, the error in the current is the dominant part. Vice versa, for big currents, the error in the voltage can be dominant, but won't change due to changing the car due to changing the voltage, which is contrary to over here where when changing the current our errors will change. Both of our error ingredients will change. So that gives us some insight into the measurement. Perhaps we shouldn't use small currents. Perhaps we shouldn't change the current too much. Not changing our errors. On the other hand, we have some maximum currents we could use for that resistance we want to, to measure actually. But we get an idea of why we shouldn't use two small currents for our measurement. It's because of the errors and it's because of other things for sure. But one, one reason for that is we want to have small errors. Yeah, error propagation sounds something like, um, again, AI, there's error propagation for learning in neural networks. Um, this is something different, but there are some similar parts in there, actually, because error propagation in the AI world also uses some derivatives and so on. Nonetheless, as you see, uh, as I hope you see, we get a real insight using that error propagation formula, not only um, concerning the value of the error, but also the behavior of the error. And that, that is worth doing all the derivations. So, when you like that stuff, don't hesitate, just subscribe. And the only thing I can say is have fun with that stuff and see you in the next chapter.